Hey everybody, League Leaders, Al Fragnoli. We're joined today by Justin Markell. Uh, Zach Sooty, unfortunately, able to join us. Justin, thanks for filling in and chatting with us a little bit today on Hot Topic Tuesday. Anytime, Al. I'm ready to ready to talk some college hoops. Let's go. That's what we're going to do. That's all we're talking about tonight. College basketball, so much to talk about. So obviously the first two rounds of the tournament wrapped up this past weekend. Justin, what are some of your thoughts? Obviously this is crazy, crazy upset city, essentially. So many upsets. Um, I don't think anybody really expected this many upsets to happen. I know I certainly didn't. Justin, what are some of your takeaways from the first weekend? I'll tell you what, I was really torn on, on how to play my bracket. You know, do I go a lot of upsets? It's been a crazy season. Um, or do I play it a little more conservative? And and I chose to go the more conservative route. Uh, and so my bracket's not looking so good right now. Uh, I think the story of the opening weekend was definitely Oral Roberts, a 15 seed. I think only the second time advancing to the Sweet 16, they knocked off. Ohio State in the first round, who a lot of people had uh, going far, even maybe even knocking off Baylor and getting into the Final Four in the South region. So that was just an unbelievable upset. Um, and then they, they carry that out, and they beat a good Florida team uh, in the next round. So Oral Roberts going to the Sweet 16 as a 15 seed is pretty remarkable. Uh, I think that's a great, great story. Another big story, I think a lot of people had Michigan as as their first number one seed to lose, and we know that didn't happen. Uh, Loyola, Chicago really manhandled the Illinois fighting Illini this weekend. A lot of people had Illinois in their final four. A lot of people had them winning it all, and... I don't know what happened to Illinois. I think I think we got to give Loyola Chicago credit where it's due, um, and they absolutely took it to Illinois, um, and and made Illinois the first number one seed to go down. I got a couple other kind of surprises, Al, and then I'll switch it back over to you. But how about the Pac-12? The Pac-12 gets four of their five teams to advance to the Sweet 16. You've got Oregon, USC. Oregon State and UCLA all advancing. The last time a Pac-12 team won a national title was 1997, Arizona. So you've got four teams out of 16 left. And who knows, maybe one of those teams could make a run. Um, and then on the other end of that, you, you've got the Big Ten, who a lot of people had, you know, I think going into the tournament, they had Michigan, Illinois, and Ohio State all ranked in the top five or six in the country and two of those teams are gone already after the first weekend um and so uh it looks like michigan is kind of left to carry the torch for the for the big 10 and they've got a tough matchup coming up i think we'll talk about that in a little bit um the last time the big 10 won a national championship was 2000 so that may be a drought that continues this year unless michigan can can kind of rescue them um but just a great, always one of just the best weekends of the sports calendar year is that opening weekend of March Madness. And this year didn't disappoint at all. Yeah, J Justin, um, you know, I think you nailed it right there. There were a ton of upsets. I, I know me personally, I did not see it coming. I, I went the more conservative route as well when filling out my brackets. I did four different brackets. Um, I had Gonzaga and I had Illinois in the final four in every single one of them. So I was really, really stunned to see Illinois lose, especially in the fashion they did. Right. I mean, you mentioned it, Loyola, Chicago really manhandled them. They were, they were more prepared. They were out coached. You know, they really, really took it to Illinois from start to finish. And I was absolutely stunned uh, to see that Oral Roberts, you touched on them a little bit. Uh, great story for them as well. Their offense is pretty darn good, too. I, I knew that coming in. I really didn't see them upsetting Ohio State, though, so that was really a shocker to me. Um, I had Ohio State in the Elite Eight or Final Four in every one of my brackets, too, so uh, that was certainly a surprise to see Oral Roberts pull that off and see them here in the Sweet 16. Um, you know, Justin, you mentioned the, the Big Ten and, and the Pac-12. Pac-12 with a very strong showing as well. Even Colorado, even though they lost... Um, to Florida State and Florida State pulled away um, pretty quickly in that second half. I still think that they looked really good in their first game, their opening round game. Um, and I thought they they looked okay in the first half. 
Um, but they just, uh, they weren't on their A game. And if they were, they might've been able to compete a little bit more, but, you know, Florida state was a little bit too much for them. They've got a lot of, um, a lot of speed and a lot of size there, uh, you know, for the Seminoles team, but, um, you know, a, a great performance by, by some of those other schools, Oregon, knocking off Iowa, USC, absolutely manhandled Kansas from start to finish. I mean, the 30 point victory there wasn't even a contest. So, you know, Luce, UCLA kind of, you know, barely sneaking in, making that strong comeback against Michigan State in the first four, and and now they've been riding a riding a high ever since then. So, uh, real interesting to see there. Uh, the Big Ten absolutely disappointing. Um, there's no way around it, but saying it was just a disappointment. Obviously, we're Big Ten guys. Um, you know, we support the Big Ten, but just a very very poor performance. Starts with nine teams getting into the tournament. I believe that was the most all time. You know, and you're down to the Sweet 16 with only one team. I thought there would easily be four or five, maybe even six teams there. Um, and, you know, honestly, U of M was, you know, maybe five minutes away. Michigan was probably five minutes away from not being able to knock off LSU. LSU gave a, a great performance, but I think they got tired towards the end there. Um, but they've got a great young um, program over there. Uh, and, and that would have been something if there was no Big Ten teams in the Sweet 16. But as it stands, still pretty embarrassing um for me to to see that and uh you know we'll see what happens but now now we've got the sweet 16 we got we're down to our final 16 teams just like that we start with 68 down to down to 16 now justin talk about some of the upcoming matchups that we have going on uh this upcoming weekend and you know maybe who you think you got going on to the elite eight any more upsets coming and and talk about your final four teams and well, one team we didn't mention as, as a surprise was Syracuse Orange. Uh, Jim Beheim once again takes a takes a Syracuse team that's a double digit seed, and they're sitting in the Sweet 16. And I think I think they've got a I think they've got a path to the Final Four. Uh, they play uh, they play a Houston team the next round, who I I think is overrated. I don't think I'm honestly surprised that Houston is still in this thing. Um, Rutgers just had an absolute collapse. I don't know if you caught that game, but uh, Rutgers was up most of the game and then just kind of blew it at the end against Houston. Um, so I like I like Syracuse to knock off Houston, and and then they're going to face either Loyola, Chicago, or Oregon State. I I think that is going to be the game of of the next round. Uh, Loyola, Chicago, fresh off of a dominating performance against arguably you know one of the the top rated teams coming into the tournament. And then you've got Oregon State. They've won eight out of their last 10 games. Uh, they won the Pac-12 tournament. They've been on fire. Uh, that's that's going to be a great game. Um, but I think I'm going to go with the experienced coach out of the Midwest bracket. And so I'm going to put Syracuse into my final four down there. Uh, and kind of look above them on the bracket to the South region. Uh, I think the Oral Roberts uh, momentum kind of stops. Arkansas is a good team and well coached. Um, but above them, you got Baylor against Villanova. And so I'm going to go again here with the experienced coach in, in Jay Wright. Uh, only him and, and Bayheim are the only two coaches left in this thing that have ever had ever won it. So I'm going to go with I'm going to go with the coaches on this one. I'm going to I'm going to take Jay Wright and Villanova to be my team out of the South. So. On that side, I've got Villanova against Syracuse in the final four. Again, I'm just going with with the coaches. Each of those coaches have won uh, one national championship. Jay Wright's won two of them. On the other side, in the West region, I'm just going to roll with Gonzaga. I still, uh, you know, they've got a Creighton team that I don't think is very good, and then they'll get USC or Oregon. Uh, USC looked great against Kansas, so that could be a that could be a good matchup. But uh, ultimately, I don't see anyone getting in Gonzaga's way. And then down below that in the East, uh, I'm also going to go again with with the experienced coach here, and, and that's Leonard Hamilton out of Florida State. Uh, I think they knock off Michigan. I think Florida State is just too athletic and too long uh, for Michigan to handle. We saw Mike Smith. Michigan's point guard, he's kind of undersized. He had a tough time against LSU, and, and Florida State 
is similar. Um, they can throw nine or 10 guys out at you, so they're not going to tire the same way that LSU did. Um, so I think Michigan's run ends there with, with Florida State. Um, and I think Florida State ultimately faces Gonzaga on that side of the Final Four. So I've got Gonzaga, Florida State, Syracuse, and Villanova. Who you got, Al? All right, interesting. Okay, so you still have some more upsets up happening. I love it. Um, I'm going to go with Gonzaga over Creighton. I agree with you. I think Gonzaga is going to be a little bit too much for Creighton. I think Creighton is a better team than probably maybe what you're giving them credit for. I, I think especially when they're hitting their threes, um, they've got a potent offense there. So I think that'll be a high-scoring game, but I got Gonzaga pulling away in that one. USC and Oregon, I think that's going to be a great matchup. I think the first half, it's going to be neck and neck, um, but I do think USC pulls away. Again, I'm basing this off of the way they performed against Kansas, but then again, Oregon knocked off Iowa, and Iowa's been a top 10 team all season long, so um, who knows, but that one should be a good one. I'm going to say USC. I'm going to say Gonzaga comes out there and goes to the Final Four with Michigan and Florida State. So Florida State, I agree with you, um, a very well-coached team, um, a lot of size, a lot of speed there. I am going to stick with U of M here. I, I can see this one going anyway. It doesn't sound like Isaiah Livers is going to be back, so that'll be a a huge hurt there, but I'm going to say they can squeak out one more win, make it to the Elite Eight. I got them matching up against Alabama. I think Alabama is too much for UCLA, and then I think Alabama is going to knock off Michigan and advance to the Final Four. Alabama's got a fantastic offense, too. They've got a lot of size, a lot of speed there. I think they go to the Final Four. Baylor, I think, is way too much for Villanova, and in fact, I don't think this one is even close, to be honest with you. I respect Jay Wright. I think Villanova's made a good run up to this point. But I think they're a little bit too banged up, and I'm going to take Baylor to advance. And another upset here, Oral Roberts, I'm going to say, has enough offense to go back and forth with Arkansas. And I say they get another three-point victory over the Razorbacks and move on. The Cinderella story continues, 15 seed going to the Elite Eight. What a story that'd be. I ultimately have Baylor coming out on top over Oral Roberts. I like Syracuse as well to knock off the upset here over Houston. I think they've had a great run and been playing some good basketball um, as of late. And then I also like Loyola Chicago to beat Oregon State. Um, I'm going to take Loyola Chicago again in the final four. What a story that would be. Uh, what would that be? Uh, twice in three years, I believe. Um, four years, I'm not sure. Um, but their second trip um, in recent history to the final four. So I like Gonzaga, Alabama, Baylor, and I'm going to go Loyola, Chicago. I'm going to go Baylor, Gonzaga in the finals. And I'm going to say Gonzaga cuts down the nets. Mark Few, well-deserved. Um, about time that he gets a championship uh, banner over there uh, for the Bulldogs. And I'm going to say that uh, that would be a high-scoring, uh, fun offensive championship basketball game to watch. 91-86, Gonzaga on top. Um, but, I, you know, Justin, I, I think what we've learned is – there's probably going to be more upsets coming up this weekend. I don't think they stop. So um, that's why I'm taking Oral Roberts. I'm, I'm taking Syracuse. Um, you know, I, I like some of these upsets to, to continue to happen. So uh, we'll see what happens. I know that I'm looking forward, though, to the upcoming weekend and some of these games that are ahead. Al, you hit it. This is, this is a great time of year. We get another weekend of this next weekend. And I just was peeking at the calendar here. We have nine days. And so opening day baseball. So a great time of year. I can't wait to talk more college hoops uh, and then to talk about the upcoming MLB season as well. It's going to be exciting. It is going to be exciting for sure, Justin. I think we're, we're everybody's looking forward to some basketball heads. So as you mentioned, this weekend's going to be fun. Um, so we'll, we'll see some basketball this weekend. Uh, we know next week we'll definitely be touching on recapping basketball, uh, looking ahead to the national championship. And then we'll be touching on um, – uh, on the MLB season that's ahead of us too. A lot of excitement there. So uh, we thank everybody for tuning into this Hot Topic Tuesday. Again, just chatting college basketball recap and a look ahead. Uh, we look forward to doing the same next week and talking a little bit of Major League Baseball as well. Thanks.